Hi everybody, my name is Jill and I decided to make a video for you guys showing you how to cut a stencil using your Cricut and then paint a sign preventing bleeding. Um, I've never done anything like this before so bear with me. I'm on my living room floor because that's where I make my crafts. I don't have a craft room someday. Um, so first off, I just want to say I've never tried this on canvas. I don't know how it works with that. Um, so I am just showing you how to do it on wood. So I just got a piece of wood, I sanded it, and I painted it the color that I want my background to be. Some people do this the opposite way and paint it the color they want their letters to be, but that's kind of confusing to me. So I painted it white because that's what I want the background to be. Uh, next, I cut my stencil and I cut it out of contact paper from Family Dollar. You can get it at the Dollar Tree too, but I don't have one in the town where I live. This costs about $3 for nine feet at Family Dollar. Um, so I put, designed it in Design Space, I put it on my mat, I cut it on the vinyl setting. I actually cut this on the vinyl plus setting, but as you can see, it was kind of too much. So do it on vinyl setting. Uh, next, I weeded out the letters. When you're doing vinyl, you weed out the excess part around the words, but for this, you do the opposite. You want to get out all the letters because that's where you're going to be painting. So I took out each letter. Um, now I'm going to lay some transfer paper on it and then lay it on my block of wood. I am going to use this clear contact paper that I got on a big roll at Walmart for $5. Um, some people use this for their stencil. I don't like to for a couple of reasons. One, it doesn't stick as well and it, you have bleeding happen easier. Um, number two, because it's clear, it's harder to see where you're painting. I've laid it on before and painted and then lifted it up and found I missed spots that I was supposed to paint because I couldn't see where it is, it's clear. But I like to use it as transfer paper. I don't have a big piece, so I'm just using two pieces and I'm gonna lay it on my stencil. Okay, I'm back. Um, I got interrupted because my phone rang, so my phone stopped recording. But I laid my transfer paper on my stencil, and I'm in the process of peeling it off. I'm just peeling off the backing, like you would peel the backing off your vinyl. Um, I'm making sure I'm getting everything to stick to the transfer paper. There's my stencil and I'm going to just lay it all on my wood at the same time. Just make sure I've got it straight and where I want it to be. I usually just eyeball it unless it's a big, there's a big space then I'll measure. And then you lift your transfer paper just like you normally would when you are laying vinyl and you leave the contact paper on the board.
takes a couple minutes to get it all off. There we go. Okay. It is a little bit off center right there, but I think I can remedy that before I paint. So this is what I have now. Um, to prevent the bleeding, you want to go through and make sure it's pressed down really well around all the edges of the letters. And once you go through the whole thing, you come back with the same color of paint that you painted your background. So I need white again. You can use a sponge brush like this that are really cheap at Joann's or Michael's um, or a paintbrush like this. I'm just gonna use a sponge brush. Um, you don't need a lot, just a light later and you paint over all the letters. I'm missing the center to my O, but I have it, I saved it. I'm not going to do the whole thing. I'm just showing you guys this first part. Um, you want to give it a few minutes to dry. Right now, I'm just going to paint a couple letters for you to see how I do it, though. Some people use a brush like this to paint the letters the color they want. I don't like to. It's too hard, and it, um, it's, it's easy to, for it to bleed with this kind of brush. But you can do it if you do it really lightly. I like to just use a brush like this and normally you want this to dry you know for a good 10 or 15 minutes till it's pretty dry and then you can go back over it with your other paint but I'm just showing you right now you only need a tiny bit of paint otherwise it will bleed it's better to do several coats that are really thin than one thicker coat um, so I just start out like this and you can see there's not very much paint there on my brush. I'm being careful around the edges to not get too much paint there. Is that a little too much? So I would go through and do the whole thing and come back with another coat. Um, again, very lightly. And once I get that done, I will come back and show you guys how I lift the stencil and show you that it won't, um, won't have bled through. The point of doing that coat of white paint is that that is the color that will bleed under if it bleeds at all. And you won't be able to tell because your background is the same color. And then it kind of creates a seal there so that when you go back over it with the color you want your letter to be, that layer, extra layer of paint is preventing anything from getting underneath the stencil and it works really well. So I'll come back when I have this finished and show you how I lift it. Okay, I'm back. I finished painting my stencil and I'm about to lift it. Uh, first off, I wanted to add a couple things I didn't say before. Um, some people, instead of painting the letters the color of their background first, will use Mod Podge. Um, I haven't ever tried that on wood like this. I'm sure it would probably work okay, and that would have the same effect. It would seal it, and then you could paint your other color of paint. 
I have tried it on like palette signs and it didn't work great, but I wasn't using this kind of contact paper and my stencil wasn't sticking very well so the Mod Podge really didn't help but I bet on this kind of wood with this kind of contact paper that's another option that would work. Also I ended up using a thicker paintbrush. Now I can't find it. Here it is. So you can see it's a little wider and that's another option that's um, it was faster because it's bigger covers more surface and um, I, it's easier to get it to look smoother with a paintbrush that size. So now I'm going to lift the stencil. You just start peeling it back and it comes off like that and you can see that my lines came out really neat and clean. Um, so far there's not any bleeding. If you peel it off and you do have bleeding, uh, one trick I like to do is I, I can just go back over it with my paintbrush and a steady hand. Um, you can just kind of smooth out the edges if you need to, but this kind of prevents any need to do that usually. I waited for this to dry for probably about 20 minutes and that is a really important thing to make sure that it's dry enough before you lift it. Even if you don't have any bleeding, if you lift it before it's dry enough, you could have bleeding. Um, some people will wait like 24 hours. I don't see that that's necessary because acrylic paint dries really fast. I mean this is dry, but you do want it to be, make sure it's dry before you lift it. And there it is. I have to go back with my weeding tool and take out all the centers of the letters, but that's really clean. Oh, whoops. Maybe that wasn't quite as dry as I thought. I can fix that. It's really smooth lines. So that's how you paint a sign without uh, bleeding under the stencil. Thanks.